So we've already done quite a bit in the Ansible series so far. And in the last video, I showed you guys how to target specific hosts, or rather, how to group hosts into individual groups. So that way you have different categories or purposes for those servers, and you can have Ansible react accordingly. But what's not so great is that every time we want to test the playbook, we have to run it against every single server every single time. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you guys how to use tags to go ahead and basically add some metadata to our plays so that way we can go ahead and run only the plays that we want to test, which is going to make testing our playbooks even easier. So what I'm going to do now is bring up the most recent version of the playbook that we've been working on lately, site.yml, and here it is right here fresh from the previous video. Now what I'm going to do is get straight into it and add some tags to this playbook, and then I'm going to show you basically how tags work. So starting off right here, we have our pre-tasks. Again, these are tasks that are going to be executed first no matter what. Let's add tags always. I'll do the same thing for this one right here. And I'll scroll down a bit. And now we have the section here for web servers. Let's go ahead and add some tags to the plays for web servers. Do the same thing here for the CentOS version of the same play. And further down, we have our DB servers, and we'll do the same thing yet again. Let's add some tags to this play right here. And then again here. Then we have this last play here where we basically added the Samba package to our one and only file server. I'll just simply add a Samba tag to that one just to keep it simple. So let's go ahead and go back to the top. Now here I've added tags always because again, I want these plays to always run. I always want the servers to be up to date and fully patched. So regardless of which tags I'm targeting, these ones should always run. But when we get further down, we basically just have a line that says tags, and then I just basically added some tags that are comma separated, and you can add whatever tags you want. I just added Apache because that's what this pertains to, Apache 2 because that's the package name, Ubuntu because that's the distribution. You can see I did the same thing here for CentOS, Apache, the distribution name CentOS, and then the package name for Apache. So basically you could come up with your own system for tags, it really doesn't matter. And then going down here, I've done effectively the same thing with the others and added the tags for those as well. So let's save the file. So let's go ahead and run the playbook just to make sure that everything works out just fine. Basically, we just want to make sure that there are no syntax errors. So I'm running it against everything. I didn't actually give it any tags to target. And nothing's changed, but more importantly, nothing aired out. We do know that everything is working. Now, what we want to do right now is just see what tags are actually available. Well, we know which tags are available because we went ahead and added those manually. But let's go ahead and look at a special command that we could run if we needed a refresher. We do ansible hyphen playbook, just like we've always done. And then dash dash list dash tags. Then the name of the playbook, which for us is just site.yml. And it's listing the tags that we have available to us. So for example, if I wanted to target the tag CentOS, I could run Ansible playbook dash dash tags, and then we'll target CentOS. We still need the double dash ask 
become pass and then site.yml. I'll press enter. Type in the magic password. Let's see what happens. So let's go ahead and scroll through the output here and see what exactly happened. Now, first of all, it did install the updates on both CentOS and Ubuntu. We applied the always tag to those to make sure that this always happens. But then when I scroll down a bit, we can see that it gathered facts for our web servers, but it only actually ran against the CentOS server right here. It didn't even attempt to run against the Ubuntu server that was identified in the inventory file. When it comes to our DB servers, we only have this server with this IP address. We don't even have a CentOS system as a member of that group. So I went ahead and skipped it because this host here is running Ubuntu. And then when it comes to file servers, it says gathering facts, but it didn't actually run anything. So as you can see, it only ran the plays against the tag that I identified in the command line. So we were able to run only the plays that we wanted to run. So for example, if I was testing some kind of syntax change on CentOS systems, or I wanted to specifically target the entire playbook towards CentOS systems, then I had the tag CentOS that I created manually, and I was able to use this command right here, with the double dash tags and then CentOS to target specifically that. So for example, I could do the same thing if I wanted to test the DB server. That's another tag that I added, so that should work just fine. And as you can see, that worked just fine. And then again, I could do the same thing, but with the Apache tag, to do exactly that. Now, what do we do if we want to actually target multiple tags? So if I bring this back here, maybe I want to target both DB and Apache. For that, we're actually going to need to use double quotes if we are going to use more than one. So here I have Apache, I'm just going to leave that there. Then we'll do a comma, I didn't put a space there, that's intentional, and then I'll do db, just like that, and then enter. So as you can see, it's going to go ahead and target the plays that have those tags. I notice that file servers here doesn't even have so much as an attempt to make a change because it doesn't have any of the tags applied to that that I've entered into the command line, so it basically skipped that entire section. So when it comes to the concept of adding tags, we should be good to go. Feel free to add your own and experiment with this. It's definitely a useful thing to include in your playbooks. I highly recommend it. So as we learn more about Ansible, I'm hoping that you are able to see all of the value that it gives us if you haven't already noticed that. The best way to implement Ansible is to think about all of the tedious things that you do on a daily basis, whether that be on your company servers, your personal servers, whatever it is that you use Linux for, you can use Ansible to go ahead and automate it. And if it's something that you have to do more than once, then it's a prime candidate for automation. And I highly recommend that you start at this point looking at ways that you can automate your environment, your servers, to immediately get some benefit from Ansible. Now I will see you in the next video as soon as I have that edited. I'll have that uploaded as soon as I possibly can. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.